Hello, good evening, and thanks for watching the news on Times Television TTV with me, Eric Nsigiti. First, the headlines. Malawi would have dealt with all her electricity blackout issues by 2025, President Razalas Chagwira has said. Experts warn illegal fishing equipment remains a threat to the population of fish in Malawi's water bodies. And the Ministry of Civic Education calls for unity for Malawi's social economic development. We also have the latest in international news. Please do stay with us. In our top story this evening, President Lazarus Chagwera has expressed optimism that Malawi would have dealt with electricity blackout issues by 2025. President Chagwera told Parliament on Wednesday that his administration plans to generate and add 1,000 megawatts of electricity to the national grid in 15 projects being implemented across the country. President Chagwera was responding to questions from members of Parliament on his State of the Nation address during the opening of the National Assembly two weeks ago. Audrey Kaparamula reports. Chagwera said nine projects are expected to be completed this year, while the rest will support the power grid by 2023 and 2025. He was responding to Member of Parliament from Cheo Central, Albert Mbawala, on strategies that have been put in place to increase power generation in the country, as NEJ is crucial to achieve the key priorities of creating wealth, jobs and food security. Among the projects mentioned include Malawi Mozambique Connect Project, Malawi Zambia Connect Project, and solar projects in Salima and in Kodakota, among other districts. This is not a wish, but rather a report based on the projects, both public and private, we have in the pipeline to increase electricity generation and supply in the country in the short to medium term. This does not even include the 350 megawatts power project at Badamanga or the 41 megawatts power project at Bogosi or the 90 megawatt power project at Songwe. Because although these are projects we are pursuing, their expected date of completion is beyond 2025. MP for Machinga East Esther Jolobala expressed dismay with the delay by other independent power producers to roll out their projects and that young people in her area have not accessed loans from National Economic Empowerment Fund. In his response, Jaguera said while COVID-19 has had impact on some projects, it has also been noted that other IPPs have not even done environmental assessment. He said government will continue pursuing possibilities to make sure that Malawians are not the losers. Leader of opposition Gondwan Nankuma, while admitting that the president has spoken against politicizing the NIF fund, there was need for a comprehensive report and evidence that he has the matter at heart. Who knows? And uh, do we have evidence that the president really has told the chair to do that? Or is it just a, uh, a window dressing issue? Chagwira presented the State of the National Address on 12 May 2021. During the reopening of the 49th session, the House has been deliberating on the matter from 18th May 2021. Research findings show that most fishers in the country are still using illegal fishing equipment. The research division in the Department of Fisheries has warned the situation could reduce the population of fish in Lake Malawi and other water bodies. The assessment was conducted with support from sustainable fisheries, aquaculture development and watershed management, and touched on fishing habits, fish stocks, and water quality of Mlare and Chuondo lagoons in Karonga district. First on Maregezo reports. The research which was conducted in February this year was aimed at appreciating opportunities and challenges to assist in the development of fisheries management plan. Speaking during the dissemination of the research findings in Mzuzu, on Wednesday, Chief Fisheries Officer Maxon Ngojira 
said the research had three objectives, one of which was to find out the number of fishermen in the two areas. Among others, the department found mosquito nets and monofilament fishing materials which were banned by the Minister of Agriculture in 2020. It's very unfortunate that uh, we're able to find you know, the gears that normally as a department we don't recommend because they catch you know, either juvenile fish or they are also, you know, uh, they, you know, are very, very highly uh, effective, you know, in catching the fish. So we found, you know, like uh, monofilaments, and the monofilaments, you know, these are the gillnets, you know, made of uh, material that is not biodegradable. Apparently, Malawi Revenue Authority has also banned importation of monofilament nets, which are not really biodegradable, hence posing serious psychological and environmental hazards to Malawi's aquatic life. Commenting on the research findings, Senior Deputy Director for Fisheries Research Department, Geoffrey Kanyerere, said the research will form a baseline as they are trying to form a management plan. The research was conducted in the two lagoons based on a request from Karunga District Fisheries Office on the premise that Mlale and Juondo are potential water bodies with considerable stock of fish, among others. Karonga District Fisheries Officer William Jirwa said they will sit back with the communities and disseminate the findings, which will easily help them formulate a workable management plan for the two lagoons. What will happen is that with the information that we have gotten here, we will sit back with the communities, disseminate the information, and together try to come up with uh, management plans that will uh, help to ensure sustainability or sustainable use of the fish stocks that we have in these two lagoons, uh, Mlali and Shondo, so that the fish stocks should be sustainable, the live roots should also be sustained. The research has among others found out Malawi has over 80,000 gear owners and fishers. The Evangelical Lutheran Church in Malawi has said the country needs more ministers of God if it is to grow spiritually. Bishop Joseph Vumbwe said this in Chikwawa when he installed the church's dean of Lower Shire, Joseph Ngulinga. During the ceremony, the church also launched a liturgy audio compact disc which contains procedures on how services within its churches can be conducted. Our reporter Isaac Salima caught up with B Bishop Vumbwe. Uh, this day uh, because we must grow and in the Lutheran Church uh, we follow a very important mlozo uh, we call it in Chicheva and uh, an anamat uh, in English or from its original language this is the these are texts given for each day so they are usable in the homes every day every morning every evening families can use them but they are also usable in Bible studies for youth, for women, for adults. They are used in order to provide guidelines so that we move through the church here. The Lutheran Church moves through the church here just like other very liturgical committed churches. So it is, you know, you grow with the liturgy. And Secretary for Civic Education and National Unity, Elizabeth Gomani Chindevu, has emphasized the need for unity to Malawi's social economic development. Chindevu is engaging chiefs, religious leaders, government officials, and the academia to strengthen unity among Malawians. Lorraine Impasa has more in this report, read by Elvis Hoahoa. The Ministry of Civic Education and National Unity is engaging different stakeholders including chiefs, religious leaders, government officials and the academia in meetings that aim to strengthen national unity among Malawians. Principal Secretary in the Ministry, Elizabeth Gomani Jindiavu, said as a new ministry they are consulting to introduce new values for Malawi by developing a roadmap that Malawi can adopt in establishing new values where the resolutions from these meetings should be fully owned by the people. We have to come up with uh, means and tools of ensuring that it is unity in Malawi. So uh, we have seen that uh, we do not have national values that bring us all together. By coming up with those national values that everybody will rally around, we think it is one way uh, of bringing together Malawians because those national values, everybody will know that this is what Malawi stands for and therefore uh, they will be required to take their uh, required role 
to ensure that there is unity and peace in Malawi. Without them uh, being around, what we have seen is that uh, every government or the ruling party that comes into power, they will have their own values. At the end of their term, their values also are sort of like forgotten, and we start all over. So they... On Tuesday, the Ministry engaged Malawi University of Business and Applied Sciences, MUBAS, with interactive exposure where participants gained an insight on how players take a role in solidifying the Malawian identity as a prerequisite for a cohesive nation. MUBAS Dean of Engineering, Dr. Gregory Gamola, said the meeting played an integral role in fostering unity. We know that um, values, they build identity and identity they actually make you to be a unique personality. And therefore, as MOBAS, we believe that we are in a position to contribute both from the, uh, being an academia institution as well as uh, having students who have got uh, perspectives that we believe uh, will contribute effectively in coming up with the things that are going to be of national importance. Meanwhile, the Ministry is planning to establish a National Day of Unity and Cultural Heritage while working to announce national values that will unify all Malawians beyond any political regime. That's the voice of Elvis Huahua ending a report followed by Llewellyn Impasa. Malnutrition has been linked to social and economic challenges that Malawi is currently facing. Reports indicate 37% of the country's population has suffered from malnutrition-related illnesses. Deputy Director of Nutrition, Blessing Simualo, says most Malawians do not have sufficient nutritious food only in their lives, which affects the development of their minds. Mualo was speaking during a dissemination of findings of a budget expenditure tracking for nutrition resources by charity Oxfam in Lilongwe. As we stand now, based on the standing as an indicator, we are at 37 percent, and this is not good globally. We are supposed to be less than that, at around 20, uh, if not less than that. Uh, it's a very alarming figure, 37, meaning that 37 percent, 37 out of every hundred Malawians are stunted, short people, short stature. And when we say stunting, it doesn't mean only the height. Everything within that person is stunted, including the thinking capacity, the ability to do any work. It's all stunted. So it's a very serious figure we have. And Linga Lini Mihoa is Oxfam Malawi Country Director. Well, um, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag. I think to a large extent it's um, depressing to see that since we have always prioritized uh, nutrition as a sector, the government has the right frameworks, um, the significant investments that the government is making, the development partners are making, us as CSOs are also busy championing the cause. We still are not able to see the efficacy of the resources that go down. I think the findings that the um, consultants have presented tonight actually show that we are still in the woods. We think we can um, make more investments, but I'm also acknowledging what the assistant um, budget director has done is to challenge us that it's not just about more resources, but really doing an interrogation in terms of where we are spending this money and what is the impact. This is the news on Times Television with me, Eric Nsigidi. We'll be back with more news after this short break. Yeah. Does your toothpaste contain sage, eucalyptus, mer, chamomile? All that in one toothpaste? Yes, try Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal contains nature's best herbs and Colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums. Ah, Colgate Herbal. Let's go. Colgate Herbal for strong teeth and healthy gums naturally. 
If there's one thing that all soaps do, it's wash. From buckets to basins, bathrooms to streams, and everything in between. <laughs> all soaps wash. Yes, but Protex is different. Its reinvented formula with flaxseed oil boosts your skin's natural anti-germ defenses by 10 times more, protecting you against 99.9% .9 of germs. So what keeps us healthy? Protex! Good health starts here. Tipolole! 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 Kuma muka onjezira ma units ndi 100 kwa cha kapena ukose lapo Muti na njira ma bonus oi mbida phone ni SMS kapena data pompo pompo TNM always with you Welcome back and still in the news, Malawi Electoral Commission has expressed, expressed satisfaction with the voter registration exercise ahead of the Nkarabe Central constituency by elections. Make Commissioner Anthony Mugumba has told times some centers he has visited have not registered any serious problems. Sam Kalimira reports. Commissioner Mugumba said in the morning hours few people were seen flocking to verification centers but urged political party leaders to encourage their supporters to verify their names. Mukumba said politics is a game of numbers, hence candidates should be in the forefront asking people to verify their names and vote come June 29. He however said the only challenge was spotted on one center where one of the political parties sent four monitors instead of two, adding that their names were also not in the make register. Democratic Progressive Party candidate Simon Vua Kaunda said so far he is comfortable with the way verification exercise is being conducted. People's Party candidate Raf Muhone agreed with Vua Kaunda but encouraged people to go and verify their names in the voters' role. Nkadabe Central constituency fell vacant after the Supreme Court recently nullified the 2019 parliamentary elections results over irregularities. According to the MEC data, 17,684 people registered in the 2019 elections and the constituency has 19 polling centers. In international news now, a new algorithm tool is helping social workers better detect kids who are in high-risk child abuse situations. Gina Michel reports. For caseworkers answering hotline calls, how a child abuse allegation is handled can mean the difference between life and death. Receiving around 16,000 hotline calls each year, Allegheny County's Office of Children, Youth, and Families in Pennsylvania has a monumental task. In the past, caseworkers relied only on their training and gut instinct to prioritize investigations. Now, an algorithm is lending a hand and making a difference. So, yeah, uh, we could never, ever go back to where we were, quite frankly, and feel comfortable that our um, gut and our clinical judgment would, be, would suffice. Algorithms are already used to determine the online advertisements people see, rate creditworthiness for a loan, and screen applicants for some jobs. Computer programs can compile and analyze data more quickly than humans and are not prone to human biases, even though some people see the potential for algorithmic bias. It's more than, uh, more than 7 million children who are reported for abuse or neglect each year. This kind of effort is really just helping frontline screeners and staff use data to make better decisions. When a call comes in, the child's name is entered into a database, as well as that of the parent or an alleged abuser. 
the Allegheny Family Screening Tool goes into the integrated data warehouse and pulls up all the structured information that's known about this family and summarizes it in a simple score. And that score is really a sort of future risk of harm score. So the call screener still has to make the decision based on what's in the current allegation. The score ranges from one low risk to 20 high risk. Noelle says sometimes the tool surprises them. Sometimes it confirms what you know what our our hunch is or what our clinical judgment is and sometimes we like scratch our heads and say wow um what is it that we're not seeing the team says it has always been aware of the possibility of inherent bias in the tool noting that law enforcement and social services databases are often filled disproportionately with people of color and the poor. But a study published in 2019 by Stanford University showed that so far, the algorithm has resulted in less racial bias in deciding when to pursue possible cases of child abuse compared to human analysis alone. These algorithms aren't crystal balls, but but as I said, I I do think that they're a really important um, adaptation to how we use data. Dina Mitchell for VOA News. Well, that item was the last in the news this evening, but before we go over the headlines again, Malawi would have dealt with her electricity blackout issues by 2025, President Razala Sakwira has said. Experts warn illegal fishing equipment remains a threat to the population of fish in Malawi's water bodies, and Minister of Civic Education calls for unity for Malawi's social economic development. You have been with me, Eric Nsigiti, but remember you can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website www.times.mw, liking our Facebook page Times360 Malawi and following us on Twitter at Times360 Malawi. Good evening. Define your surroundings with the color of your choice. Make it warm, creative, friendly, and vibrant.